Here's three pieces of 3D artwork that I created in Illustrator pretty quickly with absolutely no knowledge of 3D software. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, so watch this video and you'll know how to do that by the end of it. Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back to a new video. So I'm sure that you're aware of the ever increasing demand for 3D graphics with programs like Blender and Cinema 4D being the favored amongst the community. 3D is gonna be one of those add-ons that every designer must learn or at least understand to a certain extent as we transition into the world of Web3 and we have more computer power at our fingertips. Well, you'll be pleased to know about Illustrator's not so new 3D tool, which is pretty efficient, really easy to use and super user friendly. It also doesn't require any 3D knowledge. So let's have a look at how you can create three different types of graphics, typography, we're gonna look at products and icons, and we're also gonna look at character design, all of which you can bank straight into your portfolio and say that you know some basic 3D. And who knows, it might help you land your next client. So let's kickstart this with creating 3D typography. Now I'm gonna run through all of the settings, most of which will apply for all the different three things that we're gonna look at today and anything that you really need to create within the 3D within Illustrator but a lot of this will be up to you to play around with to get the desired results once you know what you're doing. So I'm just going to write some text here as an initial example. The good thing about this tool is that you can keep it as live type meaning that you can apply you know all your 3D styles and settings and then simply click back and change the text, change the font, whatever you want to do to it all without having to start again. We love that. So when we open up this 3D panel, what do we have? What are these four different options that we have here? Well, some of them you probably already recognize. Plane, which will let you rotate your graphics in a 3D space, but will remain as a flat graphic. Extrude, pretty self-explanatory. Extrudes the shape in one direction. You can see this being useful for like 3D product mock-ups or something like that. Revolve, this will do some mad 360 whip around. So this can be used for creating nice abstract graphics, but also things that loop symmetrical in a cylinder. Think of like a glass or a donut or like a bowl or something like that. And then we have Inflate. This is the beauty of the update and what people have been raving about. And to be honest, I've used this on a couple of commercial projects now and it is its quality. This again, does what it says on the tin, but it inflates an object in a nice smooth 3d way you remember how extrude was very sharp and had sort of flat edges this is all curved nice and smooth now we've seen most of those other 3d tools before but the inflate option is what we're going to want to play around with today we also might have a little look at the revolve one as well so at this point i'd just like to say that you don't have to apply these effects just to the live type you can scan in your hand lettering and as long as you convert it to a vector so you can either redraw it in illustrator or image trace your work you can apply these effects to that too any vector graphic so when you start editing though it's important to group the elements if you want them to edit as one whole graphic and you want them to interact or sort of reflect off of one another if they're not grouped they will edit individually you'll notice this a lot more when we get into the graphics and the characters so remind me to remind you later on now the depth will decide how much extrusion you want and for this i'm wanting it to be pretty symmetrical and rounded on both sides so i'm going to select both sides and make sure that is right without having both sides inflated you'll have a inflated front and then a flat back that could be useful if you're wanting something to look like it's laying on a flat surface but that's not what we want to do today now rotation is important here so with any 3d object the depth comes from being able to see the asset from more angles than just straight on so you can customize that they have some presets as well isometric top is nice it'll make it look like it's sort of laying down at an angle isometric right as well might be nicer for your little graphics say you've got like a little pizza or something i don't know again it really depends on what you're doing free start with it now this magic little button here is render with ray tracing this will offer a render preview of your object you're going to see a low res version on your artboard at the moment if you press it it will want once it loads, we'll show you it in much greater detail. And now you can start to see the reflections coming through and it's, it's a lot more crisp and you know a lot higher quality. So depending on how strong your machine is, I would recommend rendering on low or not at all until you know you wanna just check your work or you're finished. This will stop it lagging out every time you make a little edit and it will stop your laptop sounding like Heathrow Terminal 4. Again, lots to change depending on what you're doing. Resolution, boring, boring, press render. And when you're happy, bam, love the results. Cool, so next we have the material options. In the materials at the bottom, if we just ignore this part for a second, we can change how rough and metallic the graphic appears. And if this is on medium quality, we should start to get some really nice reflections, which you can alter once we get to the lighting part. At the top of this box, though, something that we scrolled past earlier is the materials. So we are currently using the base material, which looks like a acrylic plastic or something. It's pretty decent, um, and I've used that for many things, to be honest. You can get away with it for quite a few things. But you have a range of other materials that you can use here. Concretes, woods, metals, etc. The great thing about this is you can actually go to this button 
and bring up the substance community asset. So here you've got loads of free ones. If you go to free, there's loads of textures that you can download and then you just simply add them into your library, which is very nice. So depending on what textures you want to use, you will get different um, options that you can alter under the main parameters. So this cloud one, which is a bit weird, has loads of customization options on the actual clouds itself. Also say I wanted to add this other texture here like leather. You can also add graphic overlays if, if you wanted to, which act as like a sticker on top almost. If you imagine like you could add, I don't know, like flowers on it or bullet holes or I don't know, your, your logo or something like that. You could just add loads of different graphics all over it. Do you know what I mean? It's quite cool. And then you've also got your lighting options, which you can go through. You've got the standard. You can change the intensity, the rotation of the light, the height, the softness, the ambient light, you want to keep that on, the intensity, and then you can get down into your shadows as well. We'll go into this in a little more detail when we get to some of the other graphics. So that was a long talk over the majority of it. I tried to cover everything without being too boring on the details, but um, I have this nice typographic design here. And all I'm going to do is just add a little bit of a soft glow. And there I have it. I have my first asset done without any real knowledge of 3D. How good is that? Ready to post. Boom. So the next one we're going to look at are the graphics. And what I mean by graphics is, well, check out this little fella. This is a little 3D graphic I'm making as part of a set of my own emojis. Now, the graphics on here that you will be making won't have anywhere near the customization of like, you know, traditional 3D tools. But it doesn't mean that we can't create something nice. It could be graphics for a website or something or, you know, for nice packaging. I've actually seen this style a lot with the new Night Kids branding, which is, um, is really bright and fun. It sort of fits in with a similar vibe as this. So when it comes to creating 3D graphic objects, objects, I guess we can call them, not text, basically. It is important to note that the layer order will depend on how things appear in 3D. Now, if you have a square and then you have a square behind it, the 3D will not extrude the same amount if they're grouped. Remember how I said earlier about how they interact with each other differently when they're grouped? Well, if they're grouped and a layer is in front of the other layer, they will extrude at different amounts to make sure that the layers stay within that order within 3D. Stay with me. I'll show examples. So on the left, you have a layered square with a square behind it and when they inflate the one behind will sit in the middle on the right you have both cut out and you know they're ungrouped they're technically two separate objects so when they expand they will expand at the same amount and there'll be two separate blocks that are the same depth so you can see this from the single side and uh, it's inflated on both sides it looks like a little balloon emoji i actually think these are sick if you want to make your own set of emojis for your brand so using the settings we talked over earlier if i say i wanted to make a little nokia trap phone emoji or something we could just take this flat graphic that i've got here and these are all individual shapes i've made sure everything that we want in different colors is its own shape and the color that we want it although we can change this as we go if we want to so then we can group it and start to add that inflation <laughs> it's one thing we know about in the uk it's inflation there we have it easy right simple 3d from flat vector graphics in a matter of seconds bet you weren't thinking at the start it's actually going to be that easy while we're on the topic of graphics you know that mad 360 rotate tool thing that we looked at earlier well this is a good example for me to show you how that works. If you wanted to make like a looped image, for example here, little donut shape, yeah, if you do it, it will loop it around in a circle. Easy donut, sort of thing you see floating around in 3D typography. But if you wanted to get a little bit techy with it, you could create like a tree or something. So using a cross section of a tree, you need to imagine what something would look like if you were to take a slice out of it. Imagine like a piece of cake. So this is what a tree would look like, and this is what it would look like 360, yeah? Add a trunk, 3D tree cake, do you know what I'm saying? But what's that? You don't have seconds to waste on doing this again. Well, welcome to agency life, baby. Constant anxiety, but don't worry. I've got you covered. So you can also drag your graphic style onto your graphic style tab like this, and it will create a new style, Matt. We are living in the future. You can then click on any of your other shapes or, you know, say you create like a set of emojis as flat graphics and just click on this graphic style and it will apply the same effects instantly. These also remain as lifestyles. So you can go into it, edit it, move it around separately, whatever. And this is a good time for you to just like the video because I'm about to kickstart your 3D career right here, right now. So one thing that I do think is important if you're creating a set of graphics that will be used within one space, say it's on, I don't know, part of a UI design or it's on like a poster or something like that make sure that you're using the same sort of angles you can have them mirrored or rotated or whatever but as long as the main angle is the same with these as well you know we we're talking about the lighting and the shadow earlier here's where you can play around with the various bits of lighting to sort of get the intensity that you want and you can also start to add
add in some shadows. So you can either have this as a drop shadow, so it sits, you know, as if it's sitting off the page, or you can have this as a shadow coming off of it, as if it's like sat down and you've got the shadow coming behind it. So this will also sit in your style. So if you see one that you like and you apply it to your first graphic, you can just, you know, add it to all the others pretty quickly. Again, at this point, feel free to play around to get your desired result. So if you keep something in an original position and you use a graphic style, say off the certain angle it's at, you can also start to layer graphics with other elements to build up additional new layers, but all with the same perspective. Sometimes if you're trying to build something in 3D and that all the angles aren't right, it might look a bit weird. Cool, so that's typography, done. Product graphic -y little emojis, done. So let's get on to the third one, which is how we can make characters. So what we're gonna do, you can, you can do this with like a full body or just a side profile or something, which I really like at the moment, the classic sort of profile headshot sort of vibe sort of like me now this whole thing effectively is the same as the graphics that we just met except from i prefer to do this like head on this also does work with typography by the way uh, i've seen some nice inflated typography that's sort of like you know what i'm saying so play around with that as well i'll put an example on the screen now but you can also do this at a slight angle as well it's the same thing as the graphics so the way i'm going to be using this is by using a flat back this time because you know they're face on i want it to inflate at the front but i don't you know don't really care about it inflating at the back so we want to imagine what our character would look like as a 3d shape and how that translates into a flat graphic so if i draw my character using different shapes for each asset so one important thing that i found more so than using with the products is on this to pick and choose what objects you want to be grouped. If I was to make these eyes and they weren't grouped, they would sort of overlap. But if they were grouped, then they act as one thing basically and they they 3d together but with this you can notice that like things like the jacket and like the neck like i want these things to extrude differently and not link to each other basically i don't want the neck to like cut into the jacket so it might take a little bit of playing around with but you want to sort of see which bits you actually want to interact with each other and which bits you don't also if i put them to the side here and on the left i've got all the ungrouped and on the right i have all the grouped uh, with the same effect applied you can see how different they look from each other the ungrouped sits as a completely separate layered 3D object, looking like some Windows 95 Donny, but the group side has a lot more depth within it. So this is also where I should mention that if you want to add some like little depth details, say, I don't know, you want to make a little puffer jacket effect like my Donny here, you can add in like a little line and as long as that's grouped, it will act as like a little inflation divider. So you can do this for the arms, basically adds in more detail. This is exactly the same concept for the graphics, by the way, and the text. So you can draw your own characters, have fun with it. Here's mine, NFTs drop in soon. Gonna bang it for a couple mil. Also, I'm sure that all of you watching at home have a better skill at drawing people than I do. This ain't it, but I don't know, I'm happy with my little dude. Cool, so there we have it. A little bit of an overview using some of Illustrator's new 3D tools, specifically the Inflate tool. One of those things that you probably see and you don't ever really think to dive into or you know think too much about, but actually it's one of those tools that I've now learned and I am suddenly find myself using it all the time. Also, I'm hoping this sort of sparks your interest in the world of 3D design and now you can start thinking about, okay, how do I take this one step further and start getting into your blenders? N not your actual blenders, but you know, your blenders. Um, and learning about the world of 3D. I'm going to be creating more and more content around uh, 3D, XR, Web3 and just digital design as a whole. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any future videos. I would really appreciate it if you could just press the like button and also just drop a little comment. Let me know what you're working on, what you're inflating. Final thing though, if you do create anything from this and post it on social media, make sure you tag me uh, and then I'll share it all onto my stories. I really do enjoy seeing what you guys create from this and I know the community that watch these videos also really enjoy seeing what other people are creating yeah off the back of these tutorials so yeah make sure you tag me and that is it thank you again for watching and i'll catch you again later with a new video see you later